Hello. When you look in the mirror, what do you see? I don't mean what your physical appearance is like, but how do you view yourself? There are some people who very obviously think a lot of themselves. The author George Bernard Shaw once said, My speciality is being right when other people are wrong. A Chelsea owner, Roman Abramovich, paid £285,000 to earn the number plate VIP1. But then, of course, there are other people who are the opposite of that. Crippled by insecurities, they think that everyone else is better than them, uh, that if they took on a job, say, in church, they would be bound to fail. I was talking to someone recently, and they told me about someone they know, and said... Her ability far outstrips her confidence. Overconfidence, underconfidence. Both are a problem, and both are addressed in the next of our Psalms of Ascent, Psalm 131. The great Victorian preacher Charles Spurgeon said of it, It is one of the shortest of the Psalms to read, but one of the longest to learn. Let me read it now. My heart is not proud, Lord. My eyes are not haughty. I do not concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. But I have calmed and quietened myself. I am like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child, I am content. Israel, put your hope in the Lord, both now and for evermore. This is, of course, another of those songs which pilgrims making their way up to Jerusalem would have sung. And that journey could be quite hazardous. Psalm 124 spoke about people attacking us. Psalm 129 about being greatly oppressed. There were any number of external dangers on the road. But there were also internal dangers. Things inside the pilgrim which could lead to trouble. And... Psalm 131 highlights two of those. The first is overconfidence. When you are so full of yourself, so sure of your ability, how easy to take your eye off the path and end up tripping, maybe even breaking an ankle. And lack of confidence is just as bad. Actually, that could stop you from setting out in the first place. But if you did set off, you would constantly be worried about losing your way, about not being able to make it. You'd be dominated by anxiety. But why does there need to be one of these psalms about all that? I think it's because both overconfidence and underconfidence are spiritual problems in the life of discipleship. Overconfidence so easily breeds the belief that we can do it all without God's help. Now, of course, no Christian would say that out loud, and most would strenuous, strenuously deny that it's what they think. But the more sure you are of yourself and your own abilities, the less you will be aware of needing to depend on God. And that's a problem in our society. A can-do mentality is one that is prized. What is described in scripture as a root sin, uh, taking things into your own hands, being your own God, that's now admired as wisdom. Taking control of your life. In the life of discipleship, it is something we have to fight against. Now, ironically, in a society that so prizes achievement, we have an even greater problem with underconfidence. The term snowflake generation has been coined in, I think, about the last 20 years, referring to the way in which initially younger people, but actually all generations, melt when they face pressure. If someone disagrees with them or tells them that they're wrong, they can't handle it. Now, of course, some people do have deep insecurities. I know all about that. But at root, for a Christian... Underconfidence is actually a lack of confidence in God. I might be inadequate, but God certainly isn't. And as we will remember, this coming Sunday, the Holy Spirit was given to empower God's people. I can't do it. K 
can easily mask, I don't believe God can do it through me. So what's the antidote to all of this? Well, it's actually summed up in Philippians 4 verse 13. To the underconfident, it says, I can do all things. To the overconfident, it says, through him who gives me strength. So as he or she goes along, our pilgrim sings, My heart is not proud, Lord. My eyes are not haughty. I'm not putting my confidence in myself. I'm not looking down on others, thinking I'm better than they are. I do not concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. I don't have to be the boss. I'm not giving in to self-confidence. But at the same time, but I have calmed and quietened myself. I am like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child, I am content. I don't demand others' attention all the time. I'm not like a little baby, constantly dependent on others. I'm not going to throw a tantrum if God doesn't give me everything I want. Even if God seems far away, I will still trust him, because I know that is part of growing up spiritually, being spiritually weaned. I'm not giving in to underconfidence. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. So why is this psalm here? I think it's because, as I said, as Charles Spurgeon said, it is one of the hardest things for us to learn. We do need constant reminders, especially because our society will try to push us off in one of those directions. Maybe it comes at this point in the sequence because it's when you've been on the path of discipleship for some time that you need to stop and take a look at yourself. Have you become overconfident, forgetting your constant need of God? Have you become underconfident, no longer believing that God can use you? Or can you still say with David in this psalm, put your hope in the Lord, both now and forevermore?